Hello guys and gals, welcome back to another episode of Haunted Gaming. This time, we do another Banjo creepypasta called Project Nightmare. Now, before I begin, I am going to read this word for word. It is pretty short, so without ado, let's begin Project Nightmare. Banjo-Kazooie is one of the greatest games for the N64. I remember having this game when I was 8 or 9 years old. I always thought this game was funny in some ways, but in other ways it was quite scary. Nowadays, I spend my time researching the betas for video games. I come across many, such as Luigi's Mansion and Super Mario Sunshine, but the most interesting seemed to be Project Dream. Project Dream was what was supposed to be Banjo-Kazooie, but for SNES. After it was changed to Banjo-Kazooie, fans seemed to like it more. I thought that Project Dream would have been the coolest video game ever. I searched all over the internet for a ROM to download, but nothing came up. As I researched Project Dream more and more, I found out that the main villain of the game would be Captain Black Eye. The name for some reason caught my attention. I couldn't see what this Captain Black Eye character looked like because there are only two known images of, of the game both, only showing the main character, which was a boy named Edison. I googled Captain Black Eye to see what exactly he is. As soon as I saw his face, I remembered. He was from Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, and that was how I had remembered him. I realized since Captain Black Eye was supposed to be in Project Dream, I should check out the actual game itself to see if there were any other things used from Project Dream that are in Banjo-Kazooie. I went to my basement to find the N64 with Banjo-Kazooie. I dug up some cool things like Mario Kart 64 and Jex. I finally found Banjo-Kazooie which was hiding right under the N64 this whole time. I returned upstairs and set up my old N64. I blew the dust out of the cartridge and pushed it in. It took me a few tries to get it to start up, but when it did, I was 100% ready. Although I could say I was nervous, I guess I didn't really know. The game began with the Rare logo, but instead of it squishing a bug and going to the intro, it was just a black screen that showed the logo for Rare with no music, and then simply skipped to the File Select screen. I didn't notice this at, at the time and just kept playing. The first file uh, was with Banjo laying in bed. The file is from when I first got the game, and I decided it was my best bet to continue on from there. When I selected it, Banjo didn't even wake up. I was a little confused by this, but I wasn't too concerned either. It began at a black screen for about 14 seconds with no audio, except for the witch Grunty laughing for, the for, laughing for 14 seconds. After the black screen, I appeared in Grunty's lair entrance. I went with, uh, with what I remembered and walked straight to Mumbo's Mountains. When I, was, when I went there, I didn't see what I remembered. Mumbo was standing in front of the level entrance, sobbing in a corner, sitting down. I interacted with him and Mumbo said, What was seen will never be unseen. The message kept repeating over and over. It didn't matter how many times I pressed A, he didn't stop. The nervous feeling inside of me grew. I wasn't sure what to do, but I reset the system to find out what the hell was happening. I thought that just maybe I was at a specific part in the game that I couldn't remember so I reset the game and tried playing again on the same file. This time the game just automatically brought me to Grunty's lair once again. This time her portrait was that was hanging was something different. If I'm correct I believe it was Captain Black Eye. It, it shocked me to see this as it was never supposed to be there. I knew this for a fact when I saw it. I had an uncomfortable feeling and I had to shut the N64 off. I was alone that night and couldn't fall asleep. I keep having these strange feelings about that painting. It seemed that there was some way the game sort of knew I wanted to research Project Dream. I went to bed trying to think about anything Banjo-Kazooie related. I watched TV to help me, help me out, but his face, it just couldn't stop showing up in my mind. I ended up sleeping that night, but when I woke up, I put the cartridge in my N64 once more. It started up normally for once, it actually began the game in Banjo's house and started playing, but also, being very cautious at the time, I went outside, the audio cut off. A text box had appeared, but there was no head to show who was speaking, and, and it said, Arg, you pesky bear, you will suffer for stealing me glory. The screen then quickly faded to black. What I saw next was horrifying, not even meant to be in a video game. The screen showed a forest like in the intro to the game. You could see the grass and trees, it was very quiet. The screen stayed there for a good two or three minutes while I was just watching, and suddenly Banjo popped up, right in front of the camera, screaming. His pupils were tiny. I think he'd gone insane. Kazooie came out of his backpack with no eyes whatsoever. Banjo began flailing his arms around like he does, 
with one of his attacks in the game. Then Banjo stopped screaming. He approached the camera and whispered, It's over. It's all over. Banjo started bleeding from the eyes and eventually just died. The camera zoomed out for a while and then Grunty started laughing and it repeated over and over. I was in shock, I felt like passing out, puking, even crying, but somehow I managed to just sit still and stare down at Banjo. After around 5 minutes, the screen went black. I took the game out, went to my room and stared at it, trembling in fear, I had no idea what to do. I wrapped the game up in used bubble wrap and sold it on eBay. The buyer surely didn't know <laughs> what they're getting into. I felt a bit happy getting rid of it, but the fear kept taking over that happiness. It, it, uh, I tried emailing Nintendo several times about this, but they just tell me that I'm insane or that they weren't involved with Banjo-Kazooie. Alright, pretty okay creepypasta. Now, this creepypasta mentions something called Project Dream. What is Project Dream, you may ask? It's an unreleased video game for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, and it was later redeveloped into Banjo-Kazooie. It was about a boy Edison who starts some trouble with, the, with some pirates. The leader of the pirates is called Captain Black-Eye. Captain Black-Eye, a prevalent figure in this creepypasta, also appeared in Banjo-Tooie. That's really what you really need to know about Project Dream at the moment. And in my opinion, that's really the best thing I like about this creepypasta, is that it's based on something real. In this case, Project Dream. As far as what happened in the game, you know, the horrible banjo dying forest scene, it's questionable if it could even be real. And most likely isn't. I mean, the player states that he or she found the game in their home. So unless, you know, someone hacked the original game and replaced the uh, original cartridge, it might be real. But even some of the things in the game would have to be you know, the product of a pretty advanced hack. Something that most likely wouldn't be worth anyone's time. One thing that does sort of get me is that the screenshot, you know, posted by the author, you know, that sort of gets me. It looks to be an off-screen capture of a painting in the game. Now, I haven't played a lot of Banjo-Kazooie. I grew up with, you know, PlayStation, so I, I missed out on a lot of N64 games. Now, in my opinion, this could exist in the game. It could. I haven't, you know, I don't have, I'm not an expert in it, but it's sort of as, sort of as an easter egg to the original project, you know, Project Dream. Captain Black Eye's quote in this creepypasta could also be a nod to Banjo Tooie, where he states that he once had a dream, a subtle nod to the original project. Or maybe the old Sea Dog despised Banjo for taking the spotlight, which in my opinion wouldn't make a lot of sense, since if anyone should hate Banjo for taking that spotlight, if anybody should be the cause of Banjo's death, it should be the original main character Edison. And that's really one of the few issues I have with this creepypasta, is that instead of the captain, I think it would have been better if it had been Edison, you know, a character slowly building up hatred for Banjo, and the new direction, you know, th that the game took place, the new character, you know, haunting gamers all because of a bear with a honey fetish took his limelight. I mean, that's really, that's really it with this creepypasta. I thought the ending was also kind of abrupt, you know, with the Nintendo calling the guy insane, which I don't, I don't think Nintendo would do. I also like that, uh, you know, the player also sold it on eBay, which made me laugh a little, you know, because it, it explains some other creepypastas where, you know, people get haunted games off of eBay. Maybe this could be another chain game, maybe it actually exists, who knows. But that's really it. I thought it was okay, it ended kind of abruptly, and it was just okay. I recommend you all to go check it out. Links in the description below. And yes, I know I read it out loud. This has been another episode of Haunted Gaming, and if you like what you saw, then like, comment, and subscribe. This is me, Mudahar, and... I'm out.